Good morning. Uh, welcome to PB's Daily Devotional. And uh, I'd like to uh, continue on where we left off yesterday. Thank you for uh, joining me again. Uh, just to remind you, this uh, devotional is uh, every day, Monday to Friday, uh, usually at around 9 a.m. Although sometimes I, I fail to be online by 9 a.m. But um, thank you for uh, joining me at this time. And um, we've been uh, talking about um, some very basic stuff, some very, uh, very uh, foundational uh, uh, stuff. Uh, we started off with the question, uh, what is God's purpose for you? And uh, by the way, uh, this is being recorded, so even if you are not able to join me at this time, uh, I hope that uh, you'll be able to watch the videos uh, at any convenient time. Um, also, please uh, share with your friends. Uh, let your friends know that there is a, a daily devotional on this site. Uh, last Monday, we started off with the question, uh, what is God's purpose uh, for us, for you, for me? And uh, we concluded concluded based on 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, that uh, it is really God's purpose and God's plan for you and for me and for everyone else to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that is so important to understand because uh, for as long as, uh, you know, that twofold purpose of being saved and coming to the knowledge of the truth is not happening in our lives, uh, and for as long as it is not happening in our lives, we will always uh, feel that, you know, that emptiness and we will always, always feel that there is something missing in our lives. So really, it's, it's all about coming back home to where God wants you to be and that is in a relationship with Him. So I do pray that uh, you would accept that truth, that uh, the, the purpose of God for you as well as uh, the purpose of God for anyone else for that matter is to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And I hope that you won't uh, delay that or postpone that because that is so crucial, so important uh, in terms of uh, living a life that has, uh, you know, direction and purpose. Anyway, so the following day, uh, Tuesday, I did talk about uh, the question, so how does a person get, uh, get saved? And... Uh, we looked at the the book of Acts and we saw the process of uh, how a person uh, comes to faith. And we looked at the, the church in Antioch as an illustration uh, wherein um, uh, we said that uh, a person needs to hear and understand the gospel first. He needs to, you know, some, someone should come along and explain the gospel to him or to her. And then uh, this person needs to respond to the gospel by faith and afterwards he needs to receive the Holy Spirit uh, and then be part of a community of faith where he or she can grow together with others uh, and then finally to continue living a life uh, of discipleship so we're actually working our way through those stages uh, and uh, yesterday I, I talked about uh, the gospel from Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, we started first with uh, verses 3 to 10 because we did not have, have enough time. And I'd like to continue on with that. But just to uh, summarize what we talked about yesterday, um, I did say that, uh, you know, it's important for us to understand that uh, the gospel is not about religion. It's not about uh, attending church. The, the gospel is uh, the good news. The good news that all that God has planned and, and desired for us can now be made possible through Jesus Christ. That's the good news. The good news is that all that God intends for you, all that God wants for you, is now possible because Jesus Christ came. And um, He was born, He lived, and and uh, He died, and He rose again. And uh, this, this historical fact and if you would believe in him uh, is is the key toward experiencing all that God has planned for you so 
and and this plan is not just for you like i said yesterday it, this plan is global and cosmic in other words it involves the whole of creation uh, one day everything is going to be renewed and restored and um, there will be no more sin and no more death the world will change it will be the kind of world that god wanted uh, to begin with mm, but sin destroyed it but now god is in the process of restoring it and the good news is that this restoration process uh, officially uh, was inaugurated when jesus christ uh, came and when he was born and, um, and so this is important for you to understand but i'd like to continue on uh, from that same passage in in the book of ephesians and i want us to see some more ideas here about the good news because it is good news it is something beneficial it is something good something that would really help you and me and everyone else so you know just let's just pray and and um, uh, join with me as we uh, talk right now about this uh, wonderful news from god heavenly father i pray lord that uh, by god's grace uh, you would help us to understand the good news even more lord god through the following verses uh, from the book of Ephesians, Lord, thank you so much that um, by God's grace, Lord God, there's this kind of technology so that, uh, Lord, in your mercy, I can reach more people. And I pray, Lord, that uh, this recording uh, may somehow help uh, people wherever they may be as they come across this video, Lord. Thank you so much for the opportunity and the privilege, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I was saying, uh, the book of Ephesians uh, was written by the Apostle Paul. It's a, it's a very um, uh, exciting book. You should read the, the, the entire book, actually. Uh, the first three chapters are very foundational, and the last three chapters are actually very practical. So, um, uh, well, you know, maybe up to, you know, yeah, verse uh, chapter 4, 5, and 6 will be considered the practical part uh, of uh, the book of Ephesians. But... The first part really lays down the, the, the gospel, the foundational truths of why the practical part, the living part, is uh, uh, so important. So let's, go to, let's continue uh, studying uh, Ephesians chapter 1. And today let's begin with verse 11 because that's, we left off at verse 10 yesterday. So let's continue with this. At verse 11 it says, um, In him... We were also chosen. So this is a, a reaffirmation of what we were talking about uh, yesterday. That uh, Christianity is all about relationship. A relationship with God. And of course it doesn't stop with that. It's also a relationship with other people as a result of your relationship with God. But let me just reiterate and emphasize that the good news has to do with the, the benefits that come from, from God. Uh, Paul calls it spiritual blessings, uh, and this involves uh, becoming holy and blameless, and you know, forgiven, and becoming part of God's family, and being part of God's plan. Uh, you know, all of those exciting stuff uh, really happens, and it is only made possible when you are in Him. In other words, when you, as a person, uh, has put your trust. In Jesus Christ and in that kind of relationship you experience all these blessings so the verse 11 says in him we were also chosen so just following through with what he already said in, in the previous verses having been predestined according to the plan of him so this is again the, the reaffirmation that uh, God's uh, purpose for each and every one uh, is not just uh, something that happens on a whim or accidentally uh, instead this is part of God's plan so it says here having been predestined according to the plan of him and then this is the exciting part who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will with the purpose of his will in other words the good news is that uh, God is now working out His plan for the world, for creation, but more importantly, for you, for me. So He's working it out. So that's an encouraging thing. That's good news that uh, God is right now uh, uh, rearranging everything so that everything will conform 
In other words, will be in accordance to His purpose and His will. And that includes your life and my life. You know, one of the things that's really frustrating, I know, for a lot of people is, uh, uh, you know, deep down inside, they want to change. Uh, deep down inside, they want to see their lives uh, change, you know. Uh, maybe they want uh, certain sins to uh, just stop or certain situations to, you know, to stop. And, and they just want to make their lives, uh, you know, right. Because deep down inside, they're thinking, you know, uh, if they're in a certain situation and it's hurting them or destroying them or, or destroying people around them, they're saying, oh God, you know, how I wish I could change, how I wish my life would be different and so forth and so on. The good news is that through Jesus, that could happen. You know, your life can change. Your life can be different. So if you're living your life right now and you're frustrated and you feel like, you know, you're going around in circles or you feel like nothing is really happening or maybe, you know, the worst thing is uh, things are happening and you don't want them to happen in your life, but they're there and you're there. So the point is that, um, you know, if you really want real transformation, if you really want joy in your life and peace and so forth, if you want your character to change, if you want to become a better person, if you want to be the kind of person that people would begin to be attracted to rather than, you know, repelled from, you know, and, you know, instead of being the kind of person that people avoid or, or the kind of person who's so insecure or the kind of person who's so prideful and so forth. Really, the key is to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ because the good news is in Him, through Jesus everything changes and, be, and it becomes conformed to the will of God. In other words, you begin to return back to where God originally wanted you to become. In other words, uh, His plan and His purpose for you begins to be fulfilled through Jesus. You see, God created us, uh, human beings, to be you know, in, the, in the image and likeness of God. That was His intention. Image means we're like Him and and, and, and likeness to you know to we represent him in other words we we are supposed to represent God in this world but look around you it doesn't really happen right I mean uh, uh, everybody's just doing his own thing that's why the Bible says everyone has fallen short of the glory of God the glory of God is simply this you know in us in man God is reflected his character his righteousness his love and so forth and so on his mercy that is reflected and so uh, the wonderful thing is the good news through Jesus through Jesus God is now working out everything in conformity with the purpose of will of his will and that's very exciting and it says again in verse 12 in order that we now we of course refers to the Apostle Paul uh, and probably together with his companions but basically is using that term to refer to himself and uh, most likely also to the to the Jewish believers you know of which Paul might be uh, hanging out with at that point and so he says basically in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ so they were the ones who actually experienced all these blessings when they put their hope in Christ so uh, that's what happens really and that's the key by the way the good news is not good news unless you put your hope in Christ. Uh, if you're putting your hope in yourself, there's nothing there. Because definitely you will see yourself fail. You will see yourself uh, missing out and, and not being able to accomplish God's will. In your mind, you're thinking, I'm going to do this. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do that. But um, eventually you don't do it or eventually you do something else. You know? okay, so you put your hope in yourself, you're, you're doomed. If you put your hope in others, you'll get disappointed because people will disappoint you. People are just like you. They are not perfect, so they will always fail you. And you can put your faith in or your hope in religion, but then you'll see something wrong in the church or whatever. The key is not to put your hope in anyone or in anything else. The Bible tells us that the key to experiencing all the wonderful blessings of the gospel the key for experiencing the good in the good news is to put our hope in Christ. 
And so he says, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. So in other words, Paul is saying, because we have put our hope in Christ, it is now a possibility. It is now a, you know, an, a, 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 something that is being worked out by God himself in us or through us. And God is being glorified in our lives. Now, this is exciting because, uh, you know, if there is anything that you and I would really want, to or desire in our hearts that is really to glorify God and to please God to see God really you know lifted up and praised and you know what if my if my son would ask me dad you know what would please you I have one answer to that I would say son I hope and pray that you would live your life in such a way that you would show that you are my son and that you are now you know uh, living a good life uh, you know respecting people and all of that in other words I mean uh, people will know that you are my son right so that's what I'll tell my, my, my son but anyway the point is this um, God is glorified when his children begin to reflect who he is and so that is made possible only through the gospel. People become like God through the work of His grace in their lives as they believe in the gospel. You know, they begin to image God. And that's an exciting thing. That's good news because uh, now it's possible. It's possible to reflect God right now because of Jesus. Verse 13 says, and you also, now he's talking to the Gentiles, he's talking now to the Ephesians, and in a way now, of course, he's talking to us. So, he's saying, it's not just for the Jews. This transformation and, and this process of reflecting God's glory is not just for us. It's not just for the Jews, though they have this special calling and privilege to be uh, God's people originally, but now God's people involves even those who are not Jews so Gentiles and yes Filipinos of course everybody else and you also Paul says were included in Christ but when did that happen he says well when you heard the message of truth so that's how it happens you know when you hear the good news okay and it is described in this way the gospel of your salvation the gospel of your sal salvation so the good news is that through Christ, all right, every spiritual blessing, and we can just wrap it up in this one word called salvation, every spiritual blessing, okay, can now be yours, can now be mine. Through Jesus Christ, that's the good news. This is the message. Jesus has come, Jesus has lived and he has served and, and he has performed miracles and then he has suffered he died and he rose again this Jesus now all right who sits at the right hand of the father makes it possible for everyone for you for me okay to experience transformation not just forgiveness of my sins not just being put right with God that by itself is a, is a wonderful blessing also but on an, on, on an ongoing basis, there is transformation in my life and in your life. So I can be changed from the inside out. I can be a different person. That's the good news. And if we go to the last verse here, he says, When you believed, okay, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So that changes everything. You know, prior to hearing the gospel, I was living my life according to the philosophy of uh, self-effort, trying to, you know, change myself, trying to make something out of myself. And I was desperate and I was discouraged because I was trying to make things happen. I was trying to become a good person, but I was always failing, you see. And if you're listening right now, and, and if that's your experience, and if you are, you know, uh, trying your very best to make a better life, but you're failing, you know what? That's a good thing. 
Now, I'm not being sarcastic. Uh, that's a good thing because that is only God's way of showing you that it doesn't work by yourself. It, that, you don't accomplish that by yourself. You don't become a good person by your own effort. You don't become the kind of person that glorifies God by your self-effort. It doesn't work. And that's why God has to save you and me. That's why God has to send His one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that through Him, first and foremost, we may be forgiven, we may become part of God's family, we may become part of His grand purpose. Through Him, we can be holy and blameless and, you know, in His sight, right, at that very point when we believe in Him. But even more than that, you know, in addition to that, He gives us His Holy Spirit. And His Holy Spirit, as you will begin to understand, uh, is the one that, the only one who has the power to overcome the power of sin. You see, uh, your willpower, which is a kind of power, right? You can make things happen because you have the will to do it, you know. Uh, I can I can choose to do something and it can happen. So it's a it's a it's a power, okay? It, that's why we call it willpower. But willpower is actually powerless uh, in the face of the power of sin. In other words, when sin is the one that is right there before you, meaning to say it's it's just coming up right there from your heart, because that's what the Bible says. You have no power against it. You know, you may say, you know, I don't want to do this, I don't want to go into fornication, you know, and so forth, but you still do it, okay? Uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, commit uh, immorality, or I don't want to steal or do anything, but you still do it. You know why? Because in yourself, by yourself, even with your willpower, you are powerless to change yourself. And that's why the good news is that aside from making us right with God positionally, it, He also makes it possible through Jesus for us to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that He can change us from the inside out. He changes our hearts. He changes our desires. He changes our, our thoughts. I mean, He changes everything. He gives us new desires and he gives us the ability to perform to full perform them or fulfill them we god gives us the grace to obey the word of god and so this is such a wonderful thing that if you have not experienced this you're really missing something that's truly wonderful this is good news for you you can change but not by your own effort you can change by the power of the holy spirit and that's why this last verse is so crucial because we are told by the Apostle Paul that when a person believes in the truth and in the gospel about Jesus, he receives a seal. So this is like a, a mark or, you know, a sign that you are, you belong to God, you know, because anybody can say like, you know, well, you know, I'm a Christian or whatever, or I, I'm, I'm a godly person, but what's the evidence to that, right? So the evidence is a transforming life and a transformed life in and through the Holy Spirit. So uh, the Holy Spirit is a seal. Uh, he's the promised one, the one that God said that we will receive if we believe in Him, uh, who is also a deposit. So those terms, you know, are very important for us to understand about the Holy Spirit. We'll learn more about the Holy Spirit later on. But uh, it says in verse 14, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. Okay, so th th four things there. There's a seal, a promise, there's deposit, and then there's possession. Uh, these are very, very important things to understand about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, He's a, he's a seal for us. He seals us so that we become truly His uh, people, or, all right? And He's promised to us, so, you know, we, it goes back to what Jesus said. He is a deposit, uh, meaning to say he is a down payment, like a, a guarantee, you know, uh, like an earnest money. When you give an earnest money to, to, to buy something that shows that, you know, it's already yours and, it, you know, the rest will come. So that's the idea behind the Holy Spirit. And then and there's the idea of possession. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you become 
God's temple. You become God's ownership. You know, God owns you. Praise God for that because that, that's good news. That means I'm no longer my own. I'm no longer living my life like a, uh, a stranger or something, you know. Uh, I now know who I belong to. I have a sense of belonging. I have a sense of identity. I now know who I am. So the good news is that through Jesus, you will discover your identity. You will know who you are. You will have a sense of belonging. You will be part of God's family and God's people. And the Holy Spirit will be a sign that you belong to God. And so ultimately, it will result to the praise of His glory. To the praise of His glory. This is good news indeed. The gospel is that all that God really wants for us, and which is also what we also want for ourselves, can now be made possible in and through Jesus. Yes, my friend, that's the good news. It won't happen anywhere else. The good news is that there is going to be real life waiting for you if you believe in Jesus. Jesus is the, the key, the source, the way, the truth, everything. If you want your life changed, if you want your sins forgiven, if you want a, to see a transformed you, if you want to see a person that is truly, you know, full of joy and peace, regardless of what is happening on the outside. But the good news, the good news is that this can actually happen in your life right now through Jesus Christ. So once again, let me just uh, stop at this point and lead you in a prayer. If you would pray with me, I do believe that uh, God will indeed fulfill what He said in His Word. If you will pray and go to God and say, you know, God, I thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus, who died for my sins and who came to give me real life. I put my faith in Him and I believe in Him. If you do that, if you make a decision to put your faith in Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, if you do that today, your life will change. You'll be forgiven from all your sins. You'll become part of His family. You'll become part of the God's you know, global and cosmic plan. Things will change in your life. You'll begin to have direction and purpose. And most of all, you know, your character will change and you will begin to have influence over others for good and your life will have significance and you will have true identity. The good news is really good. It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for the world. That's why I'm using this uh, technology to try to reach as many people as possible. And I hope that you will share this video with others. You know, just copy the URL and then post it everywhere. You know, share it with your friends. Let others hear the good news that they can have a different kind of life in and through Jesus Christ. That's the good news. So join with me as uh, I pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the good news. Thank you so much that through Jesus, all that you have intended and planned for us can now be made possible. Thank you that through Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, my life can change. I can be forgiven. I can have a new life. I can uh, see a different me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that makes all of this possible. I now put my faith in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. And I'm willing to follow you all the days of my life. Will you come into my life, Lord, and transform me like you said in your word. Make me a new person, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, if you pray that prayer, and I'm praying that by God's grace, your new life will start today. You will experience real life in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.